Lights. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. There is an easily recognizable distinction between a bookkeeper and a bookmaker. They usually are to be found one within and the other without the law. But when a bookkeeper starts taking from a bookmaker, such a nice distinction is apt to become confused amid photo finishes, scratch sheets, and the morning wire. With results ranging from Welshing to grand larceny, from mayhem to murder. Results which we hope will keep you in suspense. Listen, listen then as Frank Lovejoy stars in Win, Place, or Die, which begins in exactly one minute. Memo on medals. Information about our military awards and decorations. The highly rated air medal is a bronze compass rose suspended by a pointer and charged with a swooping American eagle clutching lightning bolts in its talons. The ribbon consists of a wide blue band flanked by narrow golden orange bands with the blue repeated along the edges. This dramatically designed decoration is given for meritorious achievement while participating in an aerial flight under circumstances which do not justify awarding the higher-ranked Distinguished Flying Cross. The Air Medal was authorized for heroic action after September 8, 1939. It has proved to be a major source of pride to those airmen who have earned it, and a stimulus to others for greater devotion to duty. Extra service and extra accomplishment merit special attention and recognition. The Air Medal pays tribute to those who distinguish themselves and do honor to their country and their branch of service while participating in aerial flight. And now... Win, Place, or Die, starring Frank Lovejoy. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. A salary will only go so far, and a bookkeeper's salary like mine, not quite that far. But I thought I saw an out, and I played it. It seemed like a sure thing. You see, there were only three of us in the main office of the Randolph Theater chain. The boss, me, and Jeannie, the gal I was going to marry. Joe. Yeah, honey? You gonna take me to dinner tonight? Well, I don't feel much like going out. Why don't you grab some frozen stuff, and I'll come by your place. Broke again? Ah, oh, Jeannie, don't start that. You know I got a lot of old bills. You promised to give me some money each week to save for the house and the furniture. Well, I will next week. I'll start next week. Joe, what's wrong? Nothing. Yes, there is. Something's wrong. Something you're not telling oh, me. Ah, drop it, Jeannie. Will you just drop it? Randolph Theaters. Hopper? Yeah? Sit, Kurtz. Ah, uh, yeah. You're late, Joe. Uh, yes, yes, I know. I'm uh, going out to lunch now. I'll see you in a few minutes. That's nice, chum. I'll be waiting at the corner. Who is that? That's the guy I'm working on a deal with. I'll tell you all about it someday. Don't wait too long, Joe. Randolph, there it is. Joe, this is Rita. I didn't get a letter from you this morning. Oh. Oh, I know. Uh, Rita, look. Um, I can't give you anything this week. Joe, I have the rent to pay and Jimmy needs clothes. Yeah, I know, I know, but I'm in a jam. You'd at least want to support your son. Oh, get off my back, will you? Maybe if that girl you're running around with down at the office found out you have an ex-wife and a kid to support, she wouldn't think so much of you. Maybe I ought to tell her. You do that. And you'll never get another dime. Once one of them gets on your back, they all climb on. But there was one I couldn't stop. Sid Kurtz. I opened the bag with the cash receipts from the Tivoli Theater, changed the figures, and took what I needed. It was mounting up. Every day it was mounting up, and I needed a break to pay it back. Well, late, chum. Well, I uh, had to make a phone call. I mean three days late. I pay off on Fridays. I like to collect on Fridays. This is Monday. Now, where's the dough? It's right here. Fifty-four dollars, right? That's right, chum. But this week, remember, win or lose. Friday. I can find another bookie, sir. Sure, but we all work for Charlie McManus. He'll get it anyhow, Joe, and he'll get it on Friday. Remember that. 
There's nothing you can do when the ponies start running against you. A hundred was easy to cover, but it got to be two hundred, five hundred, nearly a thousand. Is that the box office total for last week? Yeah. Mr. Randolph wants to see it. Why does he want to see it? He checks it every once in a while, doesn't he? Is something wrong, Joe? Huh, do I act as though there's anything wrong? Oh, hello, Hopper. Here's the tape, Mr. Randolph. The grosses seem a bit low. Television. Uh, the weather, maybe. Yeah. Well, it's a long haul that counts. My profit for the year. We'll know that after the audit. Audit? Yes. Well, that's right. You weren't with us last year. We make our annual audit at the end of this month, Harper. That'll be in eight days. <laughs> Uh, Charlie, uh, this is Joe Harper. Yeah, Harper. Uh, I bet for Sid Kurt's book. All right, sure. Uh, what's the line on Sturdy Duke and the Sixth? Beaver money. You should walk in. Well, uh, I want a, uh, a thousand on the nose. Did you say a grand, Harper? Yeah, uh, on the nose. Uh, just a minute. wants you to meet him for lunch. Oh, I can't. I got work to do. I won't take the bet unless you talk to Sid before the race. Well, uh, okay. Tell him to meet me at the, uh, cafeteria. About this bet, Joe. Well, what's wrong with it? Nothing. Except I'd like to have the dough before the race. That's McManus's orders. But I haven't got it. That's what I mean, Chum. You can't afford that kind of dough. Oh, you've got to take the bet. I don't got to do anything unless McManus tells me. Well, look, Sid, I'm going to tell you something I'm not supposed to, but... Well, it isn't my bet. What do you mean? I'm planting it for Mr. Randolph. Randolph? Your boy? Yeah, I... You wouldn't kid me, would you, Harper? No, Sid, you know me. Yeah, I know you... All right, tell your boss he's got a bet. And the payoff day is Friday. Sure, I said. Thanks. I'm glad it ain't your bet. I've seen guys get themselves in a bind. They bet two bucks and lose, then it's a five, ten, a hundred. And it gets to be a grand. That's where the trouble starts, Hopper. Loser starts small, and sometimes he winds up betting his life. <laughs> the second act of Suspense. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Oh, Joe, what are you doing? Oh, hi, Daphne. Just eating a midnight snack. What is that mess? That mess is a liverwurst, salami, lettuce, and peanut butter delight. Nightmares and will like it. What woke you up? My stomach was growling. What woke you up? You. Mm. And I was dreaming such a pleasant dream. Oh? What? I dreamed all of our savings bonds had matured and we were cashing them in. That kind of a dream I can appreciate. We were planning a trip around the world, and you bought me a fur coat, and I bought you that fishing tackle you want. Oh, it was gorgeous. Well, it doesn't have to be just a dream. Some of our savings bonds are ready to mature now. Joe, maybe we shouldn't cash them in. They can go on earning interest, you know, and it adds up fast. I know. That's why we started buying savings bonds, remember? With a bond a month on the payroll savings plan, our money is saved automatically. Stop waiting that sandwich under my nose. You're making me hungry. Well, fix yourself a sandwich, ma'am. I got all the makings right over here. All right. Move over, you bond-buying midnight maverick. I'm going to fix myself a hundinger. And now... Starring Frank Lovejoy, Act Two of Win, Place, or Die. The trouble with horses is they can't read. At least they don't read the racing form. Sturdy Duke finished fourth. Next day, Time Step finished out of the money. Thursday, Atomic Dust ran out. By Friday, I was into Sid Kurt's book for 4,600 bucks. 
I waited all day for his call, but it never came. I thought I had one more day. But when I got home, I found I was wrong. You keep late hours, Joe. Kurtz? Yeah, Kurtz. The guy who gets sore when people break dates with him. I tried to call you. You did? Funny, I never got the message. McManus must be getting absent-minded. Well, I tried all day. I tell you, the line was busy. That's a pity, Joe. They must have been booking a lot of action today to tie up your lines like that. Well, the play was light today, Joe. Very light. We had a bad week. Book got hit hard. I'm glad you got 4600 for me, Joe. You have got 4600 haven't you? No. I haven't got it. Oh, it's too bad. I can't tell you how sorry I am, Joe. I, I sort of choke up. I can't find a word. Oh, Sid, now listen to me. I'll, I'll have the dough for you tomorrow. Tomorrow, sure. It isn't my fault. They weren't my bets. You know that. Oh, you told me. Randolph was away all day. I even waited for him late, but he didn't even call me. He'll be in tomorrow, though. I'll get the dough for you. I'll get it. All right, Joe. Get a good night's sleep, kid. I'll wait till tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Sid. You're a friend. Sure, every day. Except Friday. <laughs> yeah. Good night, Sid. Good night, Joe. Joe. Yeah. There's something I think you ought to know. What's that? I hate a Welsher. Used to be an elevator operator in your office building. He, he tried to beat me out of a $20 bet. I didn't like to do it, but I gave him a... Oh, it. That's a big idea. Just telling you the story, Joe. I hit this other guy a lot harder for a lousy 20 bucks. He was in the hospital for quite a while. See you tomorrow, Joe. Morning, Jeannie. Good morning. Good morning, Harper. Good morning, sir. Oh, a day like this, I'd rather play golf than work. Tell me I'm dispensable, Jeannie. You're not. Not today. A couple of distributors coming in, and Mr. Charlie McManus calls you. Who? Oh. McManus? I don't know anybody named McManus. Who's he with? I don't know. But he said you owed him $4,600. Well, I guess I should know him then, shouldn't I? Do we have a creditor named McManus on the books, Harper? No, 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 we don't, Mr. Randolph. He wasn't very pleasant about it. He wants you to meet him tonight with the money. What did he say? Where? In the bar at the Tip Top Club. He said there'd be trouble if you went there by 9 o'clock. I, I don't like it, Mr. Randolph. Neither do I. Jeannie, you better call Mrs. Randolph and tell her I won't be home for dinner. You're going to meet this uh, McManus? Whatever he wants. I certainly should find out about it. Well, maybe he made a mistake. He might have you mixed up with some other Randolph. Let me go talk to him. Thanks, Hopper. But when a man says I owe him money, I prefer to talk to him myself. <laughs> Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Joe? Joe? Joe, stop reading that paper and talk to me. I'm listening. Go ahead. Well, I was talking to Mrs. Snyder today. You know, she's the one whose boy had 31% less cavities. Uh-huh. Well, she thinks that we should buy bigger savings bonds. Uh-huh. She says that when people can afford it, it makes more sense. Oh, she says there are a lot of different denominations. They start at $25, but then there are a 50, 100, 200, and even $500 bonds. Is that so? And then with the ones we've already bought through the payroll savings plan, we have quite a nest egg. Uh-huh. Are you listening to me? Uh-huh. Did you know that the total accumulated compounded semi-annual interest of the Series E savings bond will amount to 93 and a third percent of the original purchasing price? Uh-huh. I thought so. Joe, what did I say? Uh, you said that United States savings bonds are a safe, easy way of investing. I did? That they help guard our country's freedom. And? They're the best investment in America's future. I said something else, too. Oh, yeah. You said that the total accumulated compounded semi-annual interest of the Series E savings bond will amount to 93 and one-third percent of the original purchase price. Well, now, how did you do that? Husband's trade secret. And now, starring Frank Lovejoy, Act Three of Win, Place, or Die. <laughs> It 
was a good thing Saturday was a half day because I had a lot of things to set up. I ducked out on Jeannie when we left at noon. All I needed from her was that she'd remember the phone call from McManus, and I knew she would. But I needed more from my ex-wife, Rita. I needed an alibi. Joe. Yes, honey. What are you doing here, Joe? May I come in? Oh, sure. Rita, I... I got to thinking about you and Jimmy. I, I brought him a couple of things. Where is he? At a movie. He goes every Saturday afternoon with the other kids. Well, I'm sorry I missed him, but... It's nice to be alone with you for a while. Three years is a long time, Rita. Joe, what are you trying to say? That I miss you. I'm sorry about what happened to us. I couldn't do anything else, Joe. Not after the way you treated me. And you looked out. Well, I've been sorry ever since. You've got another girl. Well, it's no good, honey. Nobody's any good but you. Take me back, Rita. Oh, Joe. Honey. Joe, I... I don't know what to say. What'll I tell my family and Jimmy? We'll tell them together tomorrow. I'll rent a car. We'll go for a Sunday drive. The three of us, okay? Oh, yeah. That's my girl. Rita, there's something I'd like you to do for me. What, Joe? Well, I'm in a, a little jam. I've got to straighten it out tonight. Anybody should ask you, will you say I spent the evening here? Will you? Say from about eight until midnight. Is that why you came, Joe? Because you're in trouble? No, I'm not in any real trouble. I just have to settle something before we can start out together again. Will you do it for me, honey? I'll do it, Joe. I don't know why, but I'll do it. It was a setup, a sure thing. It couldn't miss. I went home and got the gun, a war souvenir I picked up for a few bucks, no registration to be traced. And at 8.30, I was in an alley beside the Tip Top Club when Mr. Randolph pulled up in a taxi and paid off the driver. All right, keep the change. Mr. Randolph. What? Who is it? Oh, it's me, Joe Harper. Harper? What are you doing here? I came down to help you out. Help me with What? What do you have to do with it? You come back here in the alley. I'll explain it to you. It's fine up, Mr. Randolph. Oh, Harper, what is it? Harper! Ah! I walked away from it before the crowd gathered. I bought a ticket and went in to see a movie. When I got out, the midnight edition of the Sunday papers were off the press. It was all there on the front page. Bookmaker arrested for murder of theater owner. Charles McManus charged with shooting. I went home. I had company again. I knew I would, but this was company I didn't have to worry about. You knew about McManus's phone call to Mr. Randolph? Oh, I didn't take the call, Lieutenant. I heard Jeannie. That's Miss Thorpe. Tell Mr. Randolph about it. Randolph say he knew this, McManus? No, he denied it. Hmm. You get along with your boss. Well, sure. Well... Your story checks out with Miss Thorpe's. Oh, by the way, she tells me that you two are engaged. Yes, that's right. Saturday night is a big date night. How come you two weren't together? Oh, well, uh, Lieutenant, I, uh, I've been married before. I've got an ex-wife and a kid. I was visiting then. Ah, I see. Well, I think you'd better come in with me. What for? Well, you're sort of a witness. Your testimony won't help this with Manus any, and... He has some bad boys on his payroll. Oh, you mean you want to take me into protective custody? Yes, that's right. Just for a couple of days. Uh, we've got Miss Thorpe, too. Well, uh... uh no, I, I don't... I don't think I'd better... Well, you don't have to come in, of course, but it would be safer. Well, thank you just the same, Lieutenant, but, but I'm all right. I, I'm not afraid. I wanted protective custody bad, but I couldn't take it. I'd remembered something just in time. The auditor. They'd be in Monday. Randolph's death wouldn't stop that. And the books had to balance. I went down to the office and started to work. I worked the rest of the night and all day Sunday, changing figures, erasing slowly and carefully. 
Then I took some petty cash slips Randolph had signed and changed the amounts. By Sunday night, I had it right on the nose. I put the books away, got my code, and... The phone. The office phone ringing on Sunday night. I didn't want to answer it, but I had to. Hello? Oh, Joe, Joe. Lita, what's the matter? Why are you calling me at the office? Joe, I've been trying to get you at home all day. Well, how did you know I was here? The detective said you might be. He said he was going to look for you there. What detective? He answered the phone at your place. He asked me who I was, and I told him. Then he, he asked me where you were last night. Well, you told him I was with you? No. Why, Rita, why? Because I was mad at you. You promised to come today and, and take me and Jimmy for a ride. You didn't show up. I didn't know, Joe. I didn't know about the murder. And that cop, Corrigan, he's on his way up here? Oh, his name wasn't Corrigan. He said it was Kurtz. Sid Kurtz. I dropped the phone and ran into the hall, and then I heard it. The whine of the night elevator stopping the door sliding open. Hello, chum. Sid, you've got to listen to me. No time to listen, chum. The payoff day has been changed. It ain't Friday anymore. It's now. There was a fire axe on the wall. I tore it loose and threw it at him. It hit him and knocked him down. I turned and raced for the stairway, but he was on his feet and after. I took the stairs four at a time, but he was right behind me. Only one more flight to the lobby, but I'd never make it now. An iron gate stretched across the stairs, and by the dim night bulb, I read the sign. This exit closed after 6 p.m. Up luck, John. Looks like you lost another photo finish. Sid, I'll get the money for you. I'll get it. Oh, it ain't money anymore, chum. You bet your life, Joe. And you lost the bet. You lost the bet, Joe. You lost the bet. Lovejoy starred in William N. Robeson's production of Win, Place, or Die by Joel Murcott. Supporting Mr. Lovejoy in Win, Place, or Die were Joan Banks, Ellen Morgan, Joe DeSantis, Bill Quinn, and Jack Crucian. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with Stan Freeberg in Alibi Me. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Suspense has been brought to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.